Ladies and gentlemen, Florida State fans, battles, and supporters, I'm Max Moody, and I'm here to bring you our third spring live show. Tonight, we got a great uh, list of guests, all current Florida State players, with the theme being instant impact newcomers. So we're going to talk to some guys like my man T. Ferg, who Definitely. are transfers who we expect to have a, a big impact, some true freshmen that are already making waves, uh, and a few other guys that we've got in the waiting room. So if you all have questions, make sure you throw them in the chat. Uh, Super Chat obviously jumps to the top, and we really appreciate the support. We are the collective that does NIL for Florida State football. So if you want to support Florida State players, go to thebattlesend.com. Thank you for putting up with that intro, T. Ferg. Uh, very punctual today. Got here early, so you've been yes, getting to put up with me for a minute. Mm -hmm. I, I want to go ahead and just start with what we were just talking about. Sorry to make you repeat yourself, but um, we all know tour duty starts at 6 a.m. Like 6 a.m. 558, right? Norvell's blowing the whistle yeah, sometimes. Yeah, for sure. So how was that compared to when you're at Alabama? Did you all practice early there? Would, what was being a morning person like? Um, being a morning person here versus Alabama is here's the whole team. Everybody's up. Everybody's on the line, ready to go at 555. At Alabama, you had an option to come lift weights at 630. So it was always good to go in and get it knocked out. But we never had a conditioning program or practice that started in the morning. So, so then um, you first get here and they were like, all right, we're going to start at 5.58. What was that first day like? Like, Did you walk in at 6 o'clock? Did you know to get there a little early in case he blew the whistle? It was, was day one. Nah, so day one here for me was I knew to get there early. And I so the um, my house that I stay in is about 20 minutes from the facility. So the whole time I'm living there, like for a couple weeks before we started tour of duty, I'm like, okay, this is smooth. Like we got to be over there like 8, 9, whatever. But I'm thinking in the back of my head at 6 a.m. to duty's coming up. So I woke up that morning at like 4, didn't go back to sleep. I woke up, brushed my teeth, did everything I had to do. I hit the door. So I actually got to the facility around like 4.50, 5 o'clock. I'm like an hour early because I'm like, I can't go back to sleep, chance it, nothing like that. So I got here early. Um, after a couple of days of doing that, I, re I realized like, okay, as long as I hear that alarm, I wake up, I'm going to be good. It was just something new, so. Yeah, you had one of those nights where, like, yeah. for me, it's like when I have an early flight the next day where you kind of yeah. just keep waking up every 20 minutes. Waking up, like, you in bed, not tired, but I'm trying to get to sleep. Like, I'm in the bed at 7, 8 o'clock, <laughs> like. So uh, you come into a room that's in an interesting place compared to the rest of the team. I, I don't know the exact statistic, but Florida State, we lose something like 90% of our offensive production. But we mm -hmm. return most of our offensive line, for except sure. for a few guys, which is, you know, is, is what you're coming in for. But how quickly did those guys get you up to speed? Like day one, were they kind of the ones walking you through, okay, here's how we do it. Here, here's what to expect in tour of duty. Yeah. Did it take a little bit maybe to, to bond with those guys? What was that like? No, I um. I was creating a bond with them before I even got on campus. So when I actually came for my official visit in the portal, nobody was here because uh, I don't know if school hadn't started yet, but nobody was here. But Coach Atkins, well, Keandre Jones, who transferred last year, I already knew him. So he was hitting me up. Then once I came, Coach Atkins had got um, a couple more of the players like Rob and Maurice to hit me up, uh, started building a connection with those guys before I got here. So once I got here, I realized how genuine genuine it was. Um, first day we went out, got some food, uh, and ever since then we just been rolling. So off the field, then they'll sit there and they was telling me, running me through schemes, telling me about football stuff. So nah, it just hit the ground rolling with those guys. So so we'll grab some questions in a second, folks. If you want to ask questions for uh, Ferg or anyone else, throw them in the chat. But I, I got. One more kind of schematic question, you know, one of the hallmarks of our offense the past few years has been how much they like to run counter Definitely. and pull guys around. Is is that something you did a lot at Bama? Is that something that's really in your skill set? Um, or is that going to be something that's, you know, maybe a, a new thing you're adding to yourself? No, nah, we did it. Um, definitely not as much as here, but we did it. And I feel like with my skill set, it fits right into that counter scheme. I feel like I'm an athletic guard, athletic lineman in general that can move and then play physical, so awesome, that's man. the two things you want in the counter scheme. Kevin, you want to throw some, uh, some questions up for us? So Brett Taylor asks, which blocking technique is the hardest, pass pro, power run, zone, or counter? Rank them from hardest to easiest. Um, pass pro power, 
counter or zone. Okay. I'll say uh, from a mental aspect, I had to say pass pro just because it goes past having to block somebody. It's already it's hard enough, like, you have to have it in you that I'm going to block this man because they're more athletic than me nine times out of ten, and you're going backwards while they're coming forward. Yeah. It's a mental aspect. On top of that, it's like they're – Third down and long, it's a loud stadium, and they come out in a crazy formation, run a crazy blitz with crazy twists, so you have to be locked in and all that. So I say pass pro uh, from a mental aspect, and then from a physical standpoint, all all the runs have their – they just have their own uniqueness about them, which makes them what they are. So I can't really rank the runs, but – Do you have a preference between, like, a, a power and a zone? Because I know – I mean, like – Size wise, you're kind of someone we think, oh, that's a power guy. He's gonna maul yeah. people, but you're also real fast. So I feel yeah, like no, I really like I like to come down here. Like, cool. if my dream my dream scenario would be, my dream scenario would be either a three technique or a two eye that just plays head up. They just run into me, I run into them, and we just bump heads all game. I feel like I'm gonna move them off the spot. How good has it been in practice to have a guy like you know Daryl Jackson? Six four three thirty lining up in yeah. those spots that helped you grow a little bit. Yeah, for sure, it's great uh, having somebody like Daryl or any of the other D linemen that we have. They're all talented in their own ways. Um, really good, I'll say they're really good. And going against that every day, especially in the spring, where it's like less scout team, more good on good. So you have ones on ones, twos on twos. You're really getting those reps every day. You have pods and one on ones and everything. So just getting to go against those guys every single day. Just make each other better, and you got to bring it. So, uh, Noel Cab asked, uh, "What were your biggest factors when choosing FSU as your transfer school?" Um, just going back to high school, Coach Norvell, Coach Atkins, they were really high on me coming out of high school. Um, I even had them in my top three, but they had just got to Florida State, mm -hmm. so I didn't get to see what they were gonna do. I didn't see how it was going, and obviously, Florida State then was not the program that it is right now. Um, so I went a different way, but whenever the opportunity came to get in the portal, uh, I talked to Coach Ack, and every I re everything I was already seeing, everything that they told me out of high school they were going to do, I've been watching it happen through TV, social media, like just watching everything build, grow, uh, even knowing Keandre when he came here, him just telling me like how the program is and how it's changed from just three years ago. So... Just the honesty and just being able to see everything they told me just unfold. I gotta think it's it's a unique perspective too, coming from an Alabama, right? Greatest of all time, Nick Saban, perennial national title contenders, because you kind of know what to look for. Yeah, for you know, sure. You, I, I don't want to say like I know we're live, but you, you probably have a pretty good BS meter for yeah, stuff when definitely. you're coming from that kind of program, and you know, just it's cool to hear you and a couple other Alabama guys talk about the genuineness of mm. of this staff. And uh, we got one from Nick uh, Nick Snyder. So when you trans when you transfer, are, are there different playbooks between schools? Is the language different? Um, what's the football learning curve like? Um, I feel like the curve going from high school to college mm -hmm. is a lot greater than transferring schools because obviously it's a different playbook, it's a different it's different language, but the base of the offenses are going to be around the same. Gotcha. Uh, you're going to, like he said earlier, you're going to have your powers, your counters, your zones. And then each school has their own little, like, touches that they put on certain things, but the base schemes are the same. It might be a different name. You might call a certain double team block something different at one school versus another, but the scheme and who you're going to and what you're running, the base of it's the same. So gotcha. just getting in and learning the language of a new playbook is the most important thing. Cool, man. Well, hey, we're we're really excited to, to see you here. As as I mentioned, you know, we keep a lot of the guys on the offensive line and, you know, bringing you in a big, powerful, experienced SEC guard is really exciting for the fan base. So I uh, appreciate you stopping by the live show tonight. I will uh, yeah, definitely. get out of here, yes, man. It was good to talk to you. All right. I appreciate you. Thanks, man. So, folks, that was Terrence Ferguson. Next, we are bringing in – yeah, we got DJ or Andre next? Andre. Andre. We're bringing in Andre Otto, uh, and then we'll have DJ Uyunglele. Uyunglele. And uh, cool. So, folks, again, we are the Battles in. We are the NIL Collective of Florida State football. If you want to directly support Florida State players, go to thebattlesend.com and become a member. Uh, you can also throw super chats on this. Make sure y'all are throwing 
questions that you have in the comment section and it will get jumped onto the screen by our production team. Andre, what's up, man? How's it going? It's going good. Dude. You always have the biggest smile on your face. I love it. <laughs> Appreciate that. I love it. I, I called and asked you to be here today because I was like, I need someone that's going to bring the energy that I know. It's going to get us in the, yes, in the rhythm. Of course. I'm excited to have you here, man. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm glad to be here. So I, I want to just kind of give an overview of your journey. So you came in last year, your true freshman going to be a sophomore uh, out of Key West, Florida. Yes, sir. Right. Uh, and you were a wrestling state champion one or two times. I was in the state championship, but Three my third. junior year, I placed seventh. Okay. And then my senior year, I placed third. Third. I was going to say, I feel like I saw you win your last one in states, but third. Yeah, I was close. I was close. Gotcha. Now, you put on some size. So so you were, you'd wrestle at 285, but so you kind of have to drop that way. What are you, what are you walking around at now? Right now, I'm probably in the 320, 325 range. Wow. So let's just talk about Built by Storms, man. What what's it been like coming into a college weight program for the first full year and, and how different has that been compared to what you were doing before you got here? It's definitely more intense. That's like the one thing is with high school, we had kind of like longer workouts. So we'd be, I got you. So with high school, we'd have a like longer workouts where it was kind of like a little cooler, but like at FSU, we've been having like 45 to an hour and 30 minutes of just straight work, which is like the workload itself is about the same, but in a smaller time frame so you have less of a break it's more intense so that was definitely one of the biggest things coming into that so what have been <clears throat> what have been your biggest areas of development over the past year and what is your main focus for development this spring um i'd say my biggest areas of development was just technique and form really working on that i mean coming in from my high school we ran the triple option we didn't have really any pass plays we only ran pass maybe three times in the season. So learning the kick step and all that was definitely my biggest goal last year. But then going into it this year, I'm kind of staying on top of it, working on the little smaller kinks of things and like working on it. Gotcha. So really perfecting the footwork. Yes, making sir. Sure that you're, so you've been playing what a little bit of a little bit of center, a little bit of tackle. So you're kind of getting the inside outside yeah. all over the place. Do you, do you have a preference on which ones you prefer to play? Like uh, what are you leaning towards? Uh, I just started playing a little bit more center. I did a little bit guard last year, but um, center I've been enjoying a lot lately. I think it's kind of fun to like almost control the offensive line. Yeah. Because like you can look and like it's a little smarter of a position. So you have to understand like the linebackers and their reads and you have to kind of like think about like what play goes to what form. Because like as the center, I can also like copy your play or check it or kill something, Okay. which is also a lot more fun. But then I also like the athleticism of like tackle to where it's like, it's kind of like I'm in my own little island on one on one against a defensive end, like on pass pro and things like that. Yeah, man. So at, how and then Nick Snyder's got a question, but I, I got one more. Folks, if you have questions, please throw them in the chat. You can throw super chats on there to bump it to the top. But uh, Andre, how how beneficial has it been to have a guy like Murray Smith who's been here five years to, to learn from at the center position? It's been great. He's been really, really, really well with like teaching me and like helping me understand how things work. He has like his own kind of way of doing things since he's been doing it for so long to where it's almost like life hacks for me to like learn awesome. instead of like me finding it out, you know? So, so we got, I guess, two questions back to back. I'll get next was very much an offensive line question. What's your favorite on campus food destination on campus? Yeah. Or close. We can do close to on, campus on campus. I definitely oh, off campus. I'm sorry, Nick, my bad. I can't read <laughs> off campus food destination. I'm gonna be real. It's probably Chipotle. I've been going there okay. probably three, four times a week. Word. Yeah, my, my points on Chipotle are crazy. I have like a few thousand up there. Whoa. Yeah. What's your order? I get a bowl. I used to get a bowl with extra rice and double meat, depending on chicken or steak. Sure. And then I'd get guacamole, the sauteed vegetables or whatever they are, the roasted onions yeah, yeah, and all yeah. that. And I get uh, the the salsa verde, the green sauce, okay. the guacamole, the lettuce and extra cheese. It's a tall order, my friend. Yes, sir. Good uh, order. <laughs> it is. I actually just found just cherries recently. Uh, That's pretty good. Spot. Yeah, I just found out. They had yeah, the uh, the Oreo, or not the Oreo, the s'mores quesadilla. All right, all right. The things we'll, to die for. We'll get into that. So another football question. Uh, Brett Taylor asks, uh, rank these blocking techniques uh, hardest to easiest. Pass pro, power run, <clears throat> zone, and counter. All right, so for me, I'm gonna say pass pro. It's okay. just, I'm still something I'm kind of like learning how to do. I have a problem with like wide hands, which I'm trying to get used to. So pass pro is probably the hardest for me. Um, I'd say that the second hardest is probably the zone for me, especially outside zone plays for me. Cause I just gotta work on like keeping square with things like that. 
And then what else we got? We got Power Run. I'd say Power Run's probably number number three on the har hardest. It's just it's just technique with Power Run. And then Counter, I enjoy the Counter the most. I love playing Counter. I love pulling. I love deuce blocking and all that. That's yeah. that's fun. Being able to like really get around the corner and yeah, you get to be and, aggressive on those blocks. Yeah, come kick a guy out. Just exactly. Yeah. Uh, Nick Snyder asks, how was your high school recruitment watching the program grow as coaches were making promises? of the destination uh that's a good question uh well the main thing with me with my high school recruitment was i wanted to make sure it was a school that was right for me and the in the uh, program mm -hmm. so i was kind of there thinking like i want to get into film so i was like fsu has an amazing film program yeah. and then i was like talking to coach atkins and coach atkins out of all the other coaches were definitely one of the most real form of like recruiting me they weren't just kind of like throwing stuff my way and letting me know he was like it's going to be a hard journey. Like, you're going to have to work to get where you are. And, like, he kind of told me of my flaws at the point, too, which was kind of, like, weird for me. I was like, aren't you just, like, aren't you supposed to be saying how good I am? Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think that was, like, kind of the thing that I knew. I was like, he's going to be real with me. They have what I want as, like, a school. So that's, like, the choice I made. Good, man. Well, yeah, we've, we've been happy to have you here. Uh, Greg for Creeman asks, how did it feel making your collegiate start last year against Southern Miss? It was it was awesome. It was really great, actually. Yeah. So I was kind of like right before the play. I don't know if you could see it on the sideline, but I was pacing. I was like walking back and forth. I was nervous. And then like I stepped on the field and I kind of looked around and the crowd was crazy. It's awesome. But then I realized I was like, I'm just playing football. Like, yeah. it's nothing different. And like we played against harder people at practice. So I don't know why I was worrying. So it was great. True. Yeah, man. And I, but I got to imagine, you know, coming from Key West, nothing yeah, it was wrong a big, with that, but like, it was a big, big. <laughs> it was a big change. Bleachers on one side of the field instead of like around it. Yeah. It's right. Now you're in the huge brick coliseum. Exactly. Uh, Bradley wants to know Andre favorite genre of film or fiction and your favorite book or film. All right. Any questions? I think my favorite genre is horror. I've always loved horror. I love jump scares. I love kind of like the anxiety you feel when you watch like horror movies. And then my favorite film, I'd say Shawshank, Shawshank Redemption. I really okay. love that one with Morgan Freeman. That like kind of like made me really love like that type of like film, I guess you could say. Okay. That's a very uh yeah, that's a very sophisticated uh film palette you got there. That's yes, a, sir. Everyone loves Shawshank though. Well, look, man, we are we're really excited to see you on the field this year. I know you're one of the you know, you've been here a year, but really one of the newcomers I think folks are going to hear a lot from this year, and, and we're excited to see what you do on the field. So, yes, sir. Andre, thanks for stopping by, man. Thank thanks you. for being on our live show. Appreciate yes, it. Yes, sir. Of course. I would shake your hand. You know. I got you. All right, brother. <laughs> we'll see it. Folks, that was Andre Otto, rising sophomore center and tackle. Again, it's been great to watch him develop. We're going to bring uh, DJ Uyunglele over here in just a second. If you all have questions for DJ, our transfer quarterback from Oregon State previously, Clemson, go ahead and throw them in the chat. And if you want to directly support Florida State players, go to thebattlesend.com and become a member today. We are the NIL collective that supports Florida State football. We are fueling the climb, and we could not be more grateful for the support that we get. Just motion them in. All right, cool. We had a little bit of a technical thing. We are getting DJ in here right now. Yeah, DJ, we'll just bring it. No, you're good, man. No rush at all. No, you're fine. Just chat away. What's up, yeah, man? man? Good to have you. Yeah, yeah. Just oh, yeah. It's good to see you in person. Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. man. Appreciate you having me on, man. How you liking Tallahassee so far? It's good, man. It's yeah. good. I enjoy it, man. It's Still a good on. city. Hella chill. But it's like a big city, but then it's kind of like a small town, like a smaller feel, like if you yeah. want to go to like a certain area. But there's still a lot to do. Like compared to where I've been at, this is definitely a lot better. Yeah. yeah, I think of us as like a small college town, but then it's like, I mean, Corvallis and, you know, Clemson or... It's a, it's a yeah. lot. It's a true college town. Like Clemson, true college town, small. And then Corvallis, smaller. Not as small as Clemson, but then you got Tallahassee, state capital. Yeah. You know, you got the you got a city, like a downtown area for real, like big buildings. So that how, part's pretty dope. How much was uh, your time in Corvallis? Like, does that have kind of a West Coast feel, like what you were used to from high school, or is it entirely different from that? Totally different. I mean, I, I grew up in like Southern California, and like Southern California is busy, busy as hell. Like you got everything you want in Southern California. I grew up like 45 minutes about from LA. I went to school in Bellflower, which is like 
20 minutes from downtown LA. So there's always stuff to do in Southern California, no matter where you're at. So like Corvallis, like it has more of a West Coast feel. I guess like the people in there, like yeah. like the people there, like a more West Coast type. I think East and West Coast is totally different. So like there's more of a West Coast feel from there. Uh, being in Corvallis, but it's totally different from where I lived at. Like the weather, the weather was probably the biggest change. Like it rained. It has actual seasons. Yeah, it rained. Everybody say it rained, and it's it's cloudy for a long time. Yeah. Like you don't you don't see the sunlight for a couple months. Like when I got there, it rained for like three months straight. <laughs> I was like, God, golly. Right. We'll get, we'll get to the topic of rain. I mean, you know, aside from the obvious question, you know, just what was it like? You know, the first time. You get here, you've gone through the, the transfer portal recruitment. The first time putting yeah. on, like, the garnet and gold. I mean, was there kind of a surreal moment of, yeah. like, oh, man, this is Man, honestly, I still didn't put on, like, the real uniforms, like the garnet and gold. I still right. didn't put it on. I only put on the helmet. Okay. But even putting on the helmet, man, it's, it's dope. Like, I mean, just, I think, like, all the tradition that comes with being here at Florida State and the legacy that people left here at Florida State and just, like, what Florida State means to a lot of people and then just to the world of college football. I mean, it's a true honor to be here. And, it, and it's special to be able to put on the garnet of gold and be able to put on that helmet. Yeah, man, you're making fans by the second. I'm, I'm sure watching this. And folks, again, throw questions in the chat. We'll uh, oh, yeah. we'll get to them. But, um, you know, you, you've seen some, some really winning programs. I mean, your high school was one of the premier programs in yeah. the country. Mm -hmm. uh, you went to Clemson back when y'all were competing for championships every mm -hmm. year, won the ACC, uh, what, three times in a row mm -hmm. while you were there. Um, Oregon State, a pretty good program for the two years before you got there and while you were there. What are some things uh, about here, whether it's coaching, culture, what have you, that are, are similar to these other winning programs you've been at? Yeah, so. I think, I think first of all, I think Florida State's definitely different to every place I've been in a good way. Like Coach Norvell, he's one of a kind. I haven't met a coach like him in my time of playing the game of football, college or high school. Like the intensity, the level of focus, and just the way he's able to lead a team, it's impressive. And like, yeah. just like, I know a lot of people talk about like his intensity and like how much energy he brings or how much like drive and like, like it's just, it's crazy how much energy he brings to a team and brings to a locker room. I mean, I think that's why Florida State is the way they are right now. How they've been able to just, the time Coach Norville has been here, it's just been on the step, it's just been on the, it's been on a rise. And like, for, you could just tell me when I came here and got to meet him for my visit and got to see the culture that he's built from him and all the other staff and the coaches that he has on the staff. It's like, yeah, it's evident why they had a, they were 13 and 0 last year and had an unbelievable season. I think the the craziest thing when you you know, get to when I get to watch practice at least that I see from coach is how you know he can he's very much that CEO that's watching everything and yeah. it, kind of observing, but he can also flip from looking at the whole field to offering very detailed, minute corrections oh, yeah. on something. Uh -huh. it, it, is that normal for most head coaches or is that just something Norvell brings us to? I think that's too? just Norvell. I think that's just the way he is. Like, yeah, he has, like, he sits back there and watches everything, but then all of a sudden he'll, like, get me on the mic, like, because I, I have a helmet yeah, yeah. cam, like, because we all know, we all in our helmet cam, so it's like the NFL, so I got a, I got a, I got an earpiece in my helmet, so all of a sudden he'll, like, be watching the play and he'll tell me something right out the blue, and, like, just something super tiny, I thought, I didn't even know he's looking at me or sees what I'm doing, and he'll just say something, like, like, hey, watch, watch your left foot here, and yeah. just little stuff, and, like, it's just crazy how, how focused and detailed he is and how much he sees throughout practice. Yeah, because in practice, you don't have, like, 15 seconds of the play clock, that thing cuts off, I guess. He's yeah, no. He's line he, you at all time. Yeah, he got a direct line the whole time. Oh right. yeah, yeah. I I love Coach Fuller, <laughs> but I don't know if I'd if I'd want that uh, in yeah, my no. job. So Brett Taylor asked to give folks feel free to fire away with questions. We'll we'll run through these. Um, for DJ, I'm a Noel through and through, but I respect Dabo. What's the biggest similarity between Norvell and Dabo, and what's the biggest difference? Ah uh, man, that's tough. I think I think first and foremost, I think they're both great coaches in their own different ways. Like Coach Sweeney, he was a great coach. I loved him, enjoyed him, and he was a blessing in my life. I want to be where I am without him today. And But I think it's kind of hard. I think, like, I mean, obviously they're great coaches, but then they're different. Mm -hmm. Like, I think Norvell, like, the energy, the intensity he brings day in and day out. Like, he's the same person each and every day from the energy to the focus to, like, whatever we're doing. And if it's at 9 o'clock at night or, like, 5.30 in the morning, like, he always says good morning, which I don't – I like, which is crazy. I'm like, dude, it's 9 o'clock at night, 8 o'clock at night. And telling me good morning, which I still haven't, like, totally got onto it. But I heard he does that because he just, like, that's just the way he's wired. And he just wants, like – 
he's just wired in that way and he's screaming good morning. It's not just yeah. like, hey, DJ, good morning. He's like, nah, he's like, hey, good morning, DJ. Like screaming to the whole team. Like just, I think that's probably the biggest difference. Like just the intensity day in, day out and the focus that he brings and the energy he brings. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was awesome. This past weekend, we saw a video from like a charity event. You know, he's like, hey, yeah, how's everyone doing? You know, and the yeah, like, no. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, those are charity things. You could just yeah, give them a pass, know, but you, no. you just like, hey, what's up, everybody? Coach Norvell here, but nah, he's he's he, that's what I'm saying. Like he's yeah. the same person, and that's one thing I really respect a lot. It's like he the genuine, like he's real genuine about what he says and what he means, and he really lives it. And that's something like it's easy to follow somebody like that when you can tell like like I'm I trust this guy because I see it day in and day out what he bleeds and like what he preaches is like what he lives. It's, it's awesome easy. to hear. So mm -hmm. Nick Nick Snyder was so having played on each coast. Oh, that's a good question. What are the big differences between football on the East and West Coast, if any? Ah oh, man, what are the big differences? I think the Pac-12. I know the Pac-12 gets a bad rap from a lot of people on here yeah. on the East Coast. I think the Pac-12 football it was great, especially last year. It was probably the best the Pac-12 has been in a long time. And honestly, the big I would probably say the biggest difference is the guys up front. In the ACC, okay. from like the box standpoint, the guys are bigger. Yeah, you know, like the linebackers, the ends, and they're bigger and faster. And I think that's probably the biggest difference from east to the west coast. Like you can't, like the guys bred out here in in the south is you can't find that on the west coast. I mean, that's just it is what it is. You know, I'm a west coast guy, and it's hard for me to say that, but that's just what it is. Like yeah. the, the D tackles, the D ends, the linebackers. Everybody's huge and everyone runs like four fives, four fours, and it's like you're 300 pounds running like a four six. It's like, dude, that doesn't yeah. make no sense. Or like you, you're tackling quarterbacks in the backfield, like chasing them down, hawking them down. Like, I think that's the biggest difference. The guys up front makes sense. Uh, Briley wants to know, DJ, with this being your third playbook in three years, what yeah. is the most demanding aspect of this offense, and what aspect of the offense do you anticipate excelling at the most? I think, yeah, man, it's my third offense in three years. Yeah. I mean, it's my fourth coordinator, fourth coordinator in my time here. So it's yeah, it's definitely, it's been, a, it's been a journey, but it's been great. I think the offense that Coach Norvell and Coach Atkins and all the other staff have put together is, is an unbelievable offense here at Florida State. I think they do a great job of using the run game and the pass game, comparing it, and pairing it together, a great deal of play action, RPO sprint out naked games i feel like we do a lot of good things and we run a lot of counter run a lot mm -hmm. of wide zone like we do a lot of stuff in this offense and but the biggest thing that i like a lot that that is probably challenging in the beginning for me right now just learning but it takes day by day process is all the different checks we have okay uh, some other places i've been i haven't had too many checks where i'm able to get to the line and check a different play versus a, versus a certain look they give you all the answers here and give you all the keys to the answers the different looks like hey like, this is the play but if this is the look that you get like hey okay. we want to check this or like certain fronts like this is what a good play is for this front so it's super cool to be able to have all those checks. Feel yeah. like you're in the NFL having different checks. Like you check out the line, hey, check the check the play here, check the run. But at the same time, it's a lot. But you got to take it day in and day out. I think one thing that that is really apparent if you look on the stat sheet about a Mike Norbell offense is he likes to use a lot of receivers, a lot yeah. of running backs, likes to have a lot of people catch the ball. And, you know, I think one talking point that us fans hear a lot is you know a quarterback needs to establish the rhythm and the timing with their receivers. Oh, yeah. How do you how do you go about establishing that rhythm with knowing so many different guys are going to catch the ball and you can't just yeah. find your one favorite. I think the one thing, I think the one thing nice about here is we got a lot of targets and there's a lot of good receivers, tight ends and running backs for me to throw to and all the other quarterbacks. Like it's nice. It's not like they're like, you got one, I like only have one guy I can throw the ball to. Like I got, I got a handful of guys like, like you know, like um, this dude, he's going to make a play. He's going to make a play. Like I don't got to worry about like, dang, like, I might throw this receiver. Like, he might not get open. Like, no, I know he's going to get open. And But like you're saying, of course, he really uses a lot of the guys on the offense that like, his play play calling and the way he schemes is a main is an attraction to why I want to be here and how he develops quarterbacks and what he was able to do with Jordan Travis. And Jordan Travis is an unbelievable quarterback from when he started here, and then he just got better each and every year. And I've seen that playing, be here in the ACC and witnessing that firsthand was like, man, like Coach Norvell and Coach Tokar are doing something good over there at Florida State. Like you could just tell, like they're developing quarterbacks, developing players, and getting them to be the best version of themselves. For so. sure, man. So a little uh, lighter on the schematic, Zach Ainge wants to know, uh, which game are you most looking forward to playing in, uh, Ireland, Clemson, or the ACC championship? 
Man, honestly, I would probably just say, I mean, there's a couple, I mean, I'm excited for the season, but probably say just the first game, man. I think yeah. uh, for me, man, I just want to take it one game at a time. Like, so playing Georgia Tech in Ireland was going to be super crazy. I mean, I've never been outside the country before. Okay. Yeah, so being able to play in Ireland, uh, that's going to be crazy in itself. I mean, there's no other team doing that this year, so that's going to be pretty crazy. But for me, I'm most excited for game one, you yeah. know, playing Georgia Tech. And I feel like that's where the season starts off at, man. You don't want to look too far ahead to AC Championship, Clemson, whatever team, Boston College, whatever it is. But, like, you just, for me, man, I'm, a, I'm focused on the first game. For sure. And mm -hmm. it's a perk. It gets to be an island. Uh, yeah. Double fries, no slaw, wants to know. Uh, DJ, the people need to know, and I, I can translate this question if, if you haven't gotten around to this in Tallahassee, slaw or nah? Meaning, have you been to, uh, uh, if you've been to Guthrie's yet, you know, they got the, the, the chicken uh, platters and, yeah. and all that. Do you get coleslaw or no? I ain't been there yet. I ain't okay. been there yet. I've seen it, but I just ain't I ain't just generally, by. like, as a West Coast guy, are you a coleslaw guy? Coleslaw guy? guy? Ah, most likely not. Nah. Like when I go to Canes, you know, I get a, I get an extra piece of toast, so I okay. get a, I get the extra toast on the side. So I'm not, yeah, I'm, I don't know if I'm for the coleslaw like that. It's a, it's an acquired taste. Yeah. Uh, Girl Bass wants to know, how have you been shaped by your college experience? What do you think has been the most important lesson you've learned so far? Man, uh, for me, man, I think uh, God's given me unbelievable uh, testimony and unbelievable story to be able to live out. Uh, I've thanked him my whole way through college, like my journey and like what I've been through since and what I've been in college has been amazing. Like I've learned a lot. I've grown from a lot. I've had a lot of ups and had a little bit of uh, downs here and there. But for me, man, I think the biggest thing I learned, my faith has grown a tremendous amount of being in college. I've always been a believer in Jesus Christ, always been my Lord and Savior. But for me, man, I never really had too much adversity growing up and in the game of football or just anything in life. And then you come in... Uh, when I was at Clemson, I had a little bit of adversity, you know, uh, dealing with some. And for me, man, I just really learned how to lean on my faith and trust in Jesus and everything he's done in my life. It just blessed me. So I, was, I, was, I feel like that's the biggest thing I learned in college, just like how to truly trust in the Lord with whatever you have on your plate. Yeah, and it's taking you on an, on an incredible journey. I, I think sitting here with you, you know, in, in the times we've gotten to talk before, man, one of the, one of the coolest things is just – how humble you are. I mean, you're, you are one of the that, highest rated quarterbacks to ever come out of high school. Um, you know, you played a perennial national title contender. You won mm -hmm. conference championships. You, you've done it all over the place. And uh, you're like one of the nicest dudes that's just sitting here. And, you know, yeah. I, I don't know if I would handle that stardom yeah. at a young age the, the same way. And it's, it's pretty cool, man. Well, I appreciate that, man. So David B wants to know, have yeah. you thought about, oh, this is a good question. Have you thought about how you'll celebrate your first touchdown as a Seminole? No, I have not. I haven't thought about that. You know, I probably like, working on something yet? No, nah, I ain't even, man, I ain't even thought about that. I'll probably hit like a tomahawk chop. I hit, probably hit a chop. You yeah. hit that for the first, yeah? Yeah, I'll probably hit that. I mean, uh, point it to the sky, thank the Lord, but I have no clue yet. I'll, I'll think about that. I appreciate him for saying that. Yeah, we'll definitely oh, yeah. make sure we got we got something cooked up for Ireland, man. But it's been awesome to sit down with you. Thank you for giving the fans some time yeah, and, no. and letting them get some insight into you. And, uh, you know, folks, just again, keep yeah, your eyes man. on the uh, highlight footage that's all over the internet because it's, it's been cool to watch you come along. And uh, we look forward to talking to you again, man. Man, definitely, man. Appreciate y'all having me. All right. See you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. All right, man. I'm just going to stand up. I know it's right on camera, but folks, no, it yeah. felt wrong after no, that good of a conversation not to shake his hand. Uh, again, I'm Max Moody with The Battles End, and we are the NIL collective that supports Florida State football players. So if you want to directly support Florida State players, go to thebattlesend.com. So next we got Kai Bates coming through. Kai, have a seat. I'm going to be the worst broadcaster ever. Folks, the battle's end has been moving up in the world, and we now have, like, real official studio lighting. It gets very hot over here, so I had to grab a, a quick hydration break, and, and I apologize. Kai, man, it's good to see you. How you yes, doing? Yes, sir. Good to see you, too. I'm good. Good. So the theme for tonight are, uh, you know, newcomers that are going to have an impact, and, you know, we're thinking through that. We, we had to have Kai Bates on. You know, it's been a... Uh, your recruitment, I know, is one of the more high-profile ones. Uh, this past cycle, you were a top 100 player nationally. Uh, you're also a baseball player. I know that's – are you oh, playing baseball? No, sir, that's Cam. That's, that's right. Sorry, guys. Anyway, we'll just pretend like that didn't happen. It's only <laughs> live with people watching. Uh, but, no, man, it's, it's been really cool to talk to you since you got here. I mean, you're a very, very intelligent young man. Um, I know you're very focused, very driven. Can you just talk about your mindset going into – your first spring as an early enrollee who who should be in high school like what were you thinking what was your main focus going in and and maybe now that you've been here a while what are your how has that shifted 
Uh, I would definitely say my main focus was just to learn, just just take as much information in as possible, and just to really lean on Coach Pat uh, as a guy that's just been there, done that. Uh, I just feel like he's a lot more reliable than a lot of other people because he's not just telling me just to tell me. He's mm-hmm. done it and he's been through it before. Uh, so just learning and just taking in as much information and just getting used to my schedule as a college athlete and just being productive. So can you give us just a little bit of insight? Because I know a lot of our, our fans love following recruiting. As a top 100 guy, highly recruited, like, what's that decision process like? Like, How do you even make that decision? And, and what's going through your head like the month leading up to that? Uh, it was probably one of the most stressful decisions or most stressful months ever, to be honest. It's, it's what you want, but when you get it, it's like, yeah. oh, my. Like, But, I mean, honestly, it's a blessing. Uh, but just going through that whole process, you're not talking to one person. You're talking to the school that's recruiting you. You're talking to your position coach, his assistant, the director of recruiting, all those people. So that's at least four people from one school contacting you at once. And me just being highly recruited. Uh, it was just like really kind of overbearing yeah. for a while, um, but that was probably one of the first decisions that I made like, on my own as a like as a young man. So just being that this decision was for me and for me only, and nobody could make the decision for me. Uh, I just feel like that was one of the most probably one of the most stressful things I've been through. I can imagine, yeah. yeah. Multiply that by by everyone. So mm-hmm. folks, if y'all want to ask questions, please throw them in the chat. But uh, I want to ask one more. You're you know again, you are a highly recruited guy out of the Orlando area and leaving the team this year unfortunately is uh who I hope goes down as one of the one of the best Florida State Seminole defensive backs, Bernardo Green, also out of a similar area. Have you gotten a chance to like talk with him and Jarian and any of the, the DBs from last year's team? Yes, and, sir. And what's, uh, what have those been like? Uh, it's been pretty good, cool talking to them. Uh, him being not even 10 minutes from my school, uh, Wakaiva High School, um, just being around that same area and just seeing people from my area be able to come out and do big things, uh, just knowing that you could do it too and seeing people like that that you can relate to, people that are just really have your best interest. Uh, just really good talking to him and just during practice, he'll be out there giving tips and just – like really just motivating and looking out for us yeah and, and renardo i assume is giving those tips in like a very calm manner he's not probably just using a normal voice not not yelling at all right Nothing, yeah yeah i'm sure i'm sure yeah. it's just like that monotone yeah so it's kind of <laughs> like and that's kind of how i am too so that's yeah so that's how i am so i mean me and him kind of just just the short conversation that we did have on the field like uh just a few times like he was telling me like i'm pressing him no man's yeah. land like just like get out of that like that's high school like yeah so he's been helping me out definitely from a few short conversations that we have had that's great man so 21 wants to know kai what's your pregame ritual uh, i just listen to music okay. uh, i listen to a lot of music and in high school um i was kind of like a superstitious type of person i feel like i would have to do the same thing like every every game day like i'll take the same walking paths and things like that just listen to the same playlist things like that i just feel like i had to do What's on the playlist? Like, uh, I li- like my favorite artist is Kendrick Lamar. Okay. So I listen to a lot of Kendrick Lamar, but to get you ready for a game, it's like a lot of Young Boy, like J Dot, G Forty, like a lot of just music that'll get you ready to play football. Yeah. So how many games have you been to in Doe Campbell? Uh, I've been to, as a recruit, I've been to three. Okay. But growing up, I've been to a good amount of okay. them. But uh, my last game that I went to was the uh, Miami, and then I went to, I was actually at the game against North Alabama, too. So that was the game I actually committed, but it was okay. like silently. I never announced it until uh, until I really felt like I wanted to. But I committed at that game, uh, before the game. I went up to Coach Norvell uh, at the hotel, uh, not at the hotel, I went up to Coach Norvell, and I just committed, and that was it. I, I silently committed there. Awesome, so I imagine you're just really excited to actually be down on the field now with that many people yeah. going nuts for you. Yeah, Hopefully definitely. a lot of solid crowds this year. Definitely. Uh, so Buck C wants to know, Kai, who's, who's the fastest in the DB room? Fastest in the DB room? I'd probably say, I feel like it's Jabril. Jabril Ross. He, okay. like, he can run. Like, Jabril can run. Like From like all of our like our GPS times and all that, uh, Jabril, he can run. So they publish the GPS times to y'all every day, so every y'all day. can kind of compete and yeah, see who is. Yeah, every day. But I'm, I, I'm my quickest I've won is 20.6, but I think Jabril has gone up to, I think, 20.8. Uh, so he's, he's got me beat by a couple. And I think it was Jabril and Conrad, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Well, I got to check the list again. But Jeez. Jabril definitely, is, he's moving. Yeah, folks, that's 20.8 miles per hour. Uh, 
Yeah, that's wild. So 904 Ant, Kai, how has the transition from high school to the college level been so far? Um, I guess we talk a little bit, you know, maybe we couch that as like, you know, uh, what just overall the, the transition up here, but then what are some specific like coaching things you've had to pick up on that are, you know, unique to the college game? Uh, definitely like technique wise, um, just it's a lot more nitpicky on your technique, just the little things that you wouldn't think about, like ripping your elbow, getting into transitions and things like that. Um, but I just feel like really it was a lot more on technique and knowing your assignment. Um, mm -hmm. Just it's really if you don't know it, you're not going to be on the field. So you got to know what you're doing. You got to know where to be and when to be. And you just got to be comfortable in that so that you can make plays. So just knowing how to really how to study film, how to watch film, how to take notes, things like that will definitely take you a long way. So it's definitely where I had to adjust. How helpful is it getting up to speed for the college game of having a coach like Pat Sertain, who has done it at an incredibly high level himself, coached his son to do it at an incredibly high level himself, and now is, you know, being very successful as, right. as a DB coach? I mean, obviously he's credible. He's definitely a credible person just seeing, like, what he's done, his track record, and his son as well. Uh, but just being able to be in the room with him every day and a person that can really relate to you and just as a person before a football player, like, just having conversations that aren't even about football, like, just a little jokingly conversation and like we'll spend time like we were at coach uh, Phyllis house this weekend playing basketball coach Pat jumping in the knockout games with us just playing basketball with us like it's not not often that you get a coach like that that just is really involved with you guys so just having a person like that around is just really helpful is coach Pat the best hooper of the coaching staff mm, I don't think he can get around like that no more <laughs> okay. I don't think he can uh, all right, so Nick Snyder uh, asked about your commitment. So when you commit silently, uh, what's the strategy in making it public? Who makes the decision when the announcement would have the most impact? Uh, it's really all on, it's decision is my decision. Uh, I just felt like uh, when I committed silently, I just felt like I wasn't ready to announce it at that moment. Uh, I just wanted to wait until uh, I chose a specific date to announce it. Um, and I wanted to focus on my finishing my season before I announced that because uh, I decommitted. Uh, right before the playoffs started for my high school season. So uh, there's a lot of attention that mm -hmm. comes with announcements like that. So I just felt like I wanted to wait until I could focus on enjoying the time with my high school teammates that I had, enjoying them and spending time with my brothers and just really focusing on trying to win a championship. And uh, I feel like after we got finished with my season, uh, I just felt like it was the right time to announce it. So I did. How, how tough is that when you're a high school kid and you decommit? Like, obviously, we all see what happens on social media. I mean, mm -hmm. it, do you just turn your phone off? Like, how do you block that out and how do you deal with that? I mean, really, like, you just got to learn how to ignore it because, I mean, you can only ignore notifications for so long, but just turn the phone off and go live real life. Cause, I mean, it is social media at the end of the day. So it's a lot of people that really just see the outside of things and not what's really going on. Yep. Like they never really lived this decision and been through it. So uh, people like that, you just kind of just got to just brush them off, um, just move on. For sure, man. So Ed, Ed, uh, Ed Lemieux, Lemieux, Lemieux. Uh, well, so Kai, who is the most difficult wide receiver to cover? That's tough because we got a lot of a lot of receivers out yeah. there that can play. Um, but I'll say. Uh, Malik Benson, like he's okay. really tough. Um, he's like really shifty, really quick. Um, people like Hakeem Williams. But I'd say between Malik and like Malik, like, he just got speed. Yeah, Malik, like he's fast. Like Malik, if you let him get in his stride, like it's over. So yeah. you gotta, you gotta really like be quick on your feet guarding Malik, for cool. real. So last one, I'll let you get out of here. But uh, obviously, the wide receivers have a saying on this team, no block, no rock. They love to block. They pride themselves on how physical they are. Mm -hmm. uh, who have you had, I guess, your best battles with in the run game that you've had to go against as a blocker? Hakeem, definitely. Okay. Hakeem can block. Uh, Hakeem in uh, in a perimeter, in yep. a perimeter period in practice. Uh, for some reason, I always end up going against Hakeem. Um, but he can definitely block. Like, that's, that's one thing he's really good at. Yeah, and he looks like I've seen him literally lift that sled over his head. It's, yeah. it's pretty wild to watch. Yeah. Um, but we appreciate you stopping by, Kai. Thank you so much for yes, taking sir. the time to, to give the fans, uh, you know, some some insight into your recruitment and how you've been adjusting. So appreciate yes, it, man. Thank, Thank you. you. I would try to stand up and shake your hand, but yeah, it's still figuring out the blocking, folks. But yeah, again, folks, I'm Max Moody. That was Kai Bates. Next, we've got Grady Kelly, a defensive lineman, our transfer from Colorado State. We are the NIL collective that directly supports Florida State players. If y'all would like to support Florida State players, go to thebattlesend.com. Good? Cool. What's up, man? Hey, how's it going? Good. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Welcome to the uh, Battles End Studios. High atop 
you know, the Tallahassee skyline. We're on the third floor, which around here is uh, pretty, <laughs> pretty high. I mean, over we're, all, we're nice. almost a skyscraper yeah, in this town. Yeah, we man. are. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's just really nice. <laughs> How you been adjusting? How's the uh, how's Tallahassee treating you? How's all it going? Yeah, it's been good. It's been it's been like a smooth adjustment. Um, you know. I'm, I'm originally from like just about two and a half hours down the road. So I got family really close and they've helped me kind of like move in and settle in and stuff. And so uh, it's been really smooth adjustment. It's been pretty good so far. Cool. Where'd you go to high school? Uh, Navarre High School. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And so. then you went to Colorado State straight out of high school? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So talk to me about um, what went into your decision to transfer and, and then how did Florida State first get on your radar and, and what was it that really made you go, okay, that's, that's where I want to be? Yeah, sure. So I... Uh, Colorado State, you know, my, my defensive line coach ended up leaving and and I felt that I could just, you know, probably explore options and have, have some better opportunities. And, and I ultimately just wanted kind of the ability to choose who my coach was going to be. Um, yeah, and, you know, I, I had talked to like Coach Fuller out of high school just a little bit and, and I kind of knew who he was. And then, you know, just getting on the phone with Coach Higgins and stuff and them having me come up here, you know, it was just just a really great like atmosphere and environment and you can just you could just feel the 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 culture as you're walking through the buildings and talking with all the coaches and there was just a lot of love and a lot of family orientation feeling yeah so like ultimately I just felt like it was the right place to be yeah so you first get here uh you're going into a room that you know has a lot of talent but also is losing a lot you know uh, definitely Brayden Fisk is moving on uh we're losing obviously Jared Verse how much did seeing them though and what those two guys developed into you know guys mm -hmm. who didn't come from power five schools originally and, and transferred here and really developed how much did that go into your decision and, and build your confidence that you were making the right decision yeah it um you know be seeing people in similar situations being able to uh walk in somewhere a little bit in the unknown and then uh, be successful it, it's definitely like uh it's comforting going coming mm -hmm. from a smaller school just seeing the coaching level that uh coach Higgins and coach jp like they can bring people up to the level um and 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 excel and exceed at that level and that was definitely uh very ease of mind and just kind of i think speaks for itself on who the coaches were so that was definitely a, a big factor that played into my decision coming here for sure man so uh folks again if you have questions please throw them in the chat we'll get them popped up on there uh First question from ML1219. Grady, how do you feel about the Braden Fist comparison? Yeah, yeah. I've seen that on uh like some social medias and stuff. Um, you know, he's he's an amazing player. Like obviously I think the whole community knows that. And 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 you know, I gotta watch that last year too. And you know, um I'm grateful for the comparison because he's such a great player. Um yeah, so you know, I, I think I think there's obviously some differences, you know, a little yeah. stylistically, but you know, I think he's a great player, so I, I I think it's a it's a really high compliment to get and receive from from the fans. So let's give the uh, you know the FSU fans that are that are watching us live and uh, supporting the battles end. Thanks, team. Uh, just kind of a preview of you. I mean, tell me a little bit about your game. What what are your biggest strengths? What uh, you know how what are we gonna see you line up as on the defensive line? Yeah. Um, I think like coming in here, just kind of the, the, the coach I got from Colorado State, my biggest strength would probably be like in my pass rush and in the one-on-one -on -one, uh, pass rush. You know, I can, I, I was taught a lot of like versatility in that and, um, you know, in, in my get off and, and the twitch off the ball, I think is my strength. And um, Coach Higgins has been really developing my hands and kind of playing a little more of the um, hip hands and feet technique here that I, I haven't always played. and. Um, yeah, so I think that that's going to really help play into uh, how, how I help the team and, and get after it this year. If it's not giving away state secrets, if, if it's confidential, you can just tell me that. Well, what's your favorite pass rush move when you're in a one-on-one -on -one <laughs> situation? You're you're trying to get that line, get to the get to the passer. Yeah, I uh, I think my favorite move is is probably the hump move, um, okay. where you throw the chop and then come back and, and hump past them and kind of like push them past. Um, that's my favorite move. I'm still working to uh, like perfect it a little bit and, yeah. and, and you know tweaking it and stuff and working on it but it's, it might not be my cleanest move right now but it's my favorite to throw but we'll see that in ireland like by then you will be, definitely see it in up. ireland you'll <laughs> see it in action in ireland good man so uh, nick snyder wants to know just how insane was the colorado game with Dion last year as a player yeah that that game was intense um it was 
you know, like CSU and, and, and Boulder, they, they don't like each other yeah. at all. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, you can feel the rivalry when we walk into the stadium, you know, the, just the crowd and the, the, the people there going crazy. And, and it's all like the, the lights and like all the, the rock is there yeah. and little Wayne's right. performing at halftime. It's like, it's like, it feels like a concert, but it was, uh, it was a very intense game, very heated game, and just like two two schools who did not like each other at yeah. all getting after it. So yeah, it was a a really great experience to be a part of. Yeah, I mean, y'all put on a show too. I remember that was one of the the late night West Coast games. Uh, watch. So that was that was an intense finish, man. That was that was cool to see over here. Uh, Chris Powell wants to know Grady playing high school ball near Tally. I know you're familiar with the in-state rivals UF and UM. Uh, which one are you more excited about playing? Yeah, uh, for sure. I am. Um, I think I have a lot of uh, family members who kind of grew up and, and rooted for UF. And so I think I'm definitely most excited to play in the UF game. Cool. I just I know uh, the feelings towards towards the, the people down there in Gainesville from uh, the people up here in Tallahassee. And I'm just excited to to go get after them uh, when we get to play them this year. Yeah, I don't know if we'll if the Rock will be there or if we'll get a halftime concert <laughs> from Lil Wayne, but like it will be uh, it will be exciting. But you'll way. feel it, you'll feel I it promise. in the air. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Zach Ajs, what's the most exciting play? Well, I'm okay, Zach. I'm gonna edit this one a little because we know the big man touchdown is obviously the most the, exciting one. <laughs> the big man. Um, so what's 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 more exciting? The goal line stop, uh, sacking the quarterback, um, or something else? Yeah, I think uh, I think the goal line stop. It, it's just uh, you're you're pinned down in a situation, probably the the worst situation in the game that you can be in. You got to just bow your neck up and get after it. And uh, the feeling of of them being like the the offense not being able to, yeah. to get one more yard on you, and and that's that's a, a very uh, it's a great feeling, and it just shows you like the pride that the defense holds. And I think that that's just uh, that's a change in morale. Yeah, uh, for the whole game. So definitely the goal line stop. Yeah, I mean you think about Randa, you know, obviously staying the obviously you know three feet's like this big. So the fact that you can stop eleven grown D one football players really <laughs> from going three. Be exciting. Yep, exactly. That's that's uh, you're just you're you're looking you're looking across the line and saying like I, I'm I, I'm better than you. You're not yeah. getting this yard, and and that's uh, you hold that with pride. So yeah, definitely the goal line stop. Awesome, man. Well, hey, we appreciate you stopping by. Thanks for taking the time for the fans, answering questions, uh, and getting letting them get to know Grady Kelly a little bit uh, off the field before I'm sure we're going to see you all over the field this fall. And, uh, yeah, man, great Definitely. talking to you. Thanks Heck for yeah. by. Thank you very much. I yeah, appreciate, yeah. It. appreciate it. Thank it. you Thanks very much. That's it. All right, folks, that was defensive lineman Grady Kelly. Coming up next, we've got Earl Little Jr., defensive back transfer from Alabama. Again, you're watching the live show of The Battle's End. We are the NIL Collective for Florida State football players. If y'all would like to directly support Florida State players, please go to thebattlesend.com. Earl, come on in, man. Have a seat, please. What's going on? Good, not much, man. I'm gonna adjust this a little, get that close to you. So Thanks for coming by, man. It's exciting to have you here for the, uh, you know, for our third live show. Uh, you're probably one of the more anticipated, uh, you know, transfers coming in. Tonight's theme is instant impact newcomers. and. Uh, we couldn't do that, you know, without <laughs> Earl Little Jr. Although, uh, I guess y'all are watching this in the conference room, right? Yeah, it's on. Okay, so you've heard me say that to three other people. But it's yeah. true every time, folks. Throw your questions in the chat for Earl Little Jr. Um, we talked to T. Ferg a little earlier tonight, another one of the Alabama transfers. We got to talk to Sean Murphy, uh, and we've talked to Malik as well. So I want your take on it. You know, you're coming from a storied program, championship caliber program, one of the best coaches of all time. What's the transition to Florida State been like? What similar in the culture and in the performance what's completely different how's the adjustment been uh the adjustments uh, adjustment it has been pretty smooth um you know it's what i expected um the similarities you know both of the head both of our head coaches you know coach Samo, he was a bit older um you know we got a young coach novell here um but they both demand excellence uh, i would definitely say that you know i'm grateful for that and i'm happy mm -hmm. to be here what's it been like working with coach Sertain, not only because he performed at the highest levels right but he also coached his son who is now doing it in the nfl and you come obviously from a great football legacy your dad played nine nine yeah. years right uh -huh. um what have y'all have y'all been able to bond kind of with your experience very similar to his son and uh, again what's it been like being coached by a guy who did it at that level uh you know it's great being coached by a guy you know especially of that caliber uh, you know being able to make you know him making it to the pro bowl you know things of like that 
know, just giving giving us the nuances, you know, of playing defensive back. You know, just giving us those tips and tricks, and you know, us being able to uh, apply that to our game. You know, I'm very grateful for that. Um, and yeah, you know, just him being there for us. You know, he's really in tune with us. You know, as far as the DB group, you know, we're all as one. We call ourselves the elite group. You know, okay. we break it off like that. You know, at the end of every practice. Um, and yeah, I'm just happy to be here. Like I said, play Who, under him. Who's been the toughest receiver to go against so far? You know, all them boys give me work for real. You know, it, 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 we go back and forth. We like to battle, you know, all along. But uh, if I had to give it to one right now who gives me most work right now is, is definitely the two, number 19 in the slot. Okay. Yeah, I like him. All day, uh, Dre? Yeah. Okay. Move um, around on you. Uh, so we're going to take some questions from here, folks. If you want questions, please throw them in the chat. Super chats are always appreciated. Support Florida State players. And Kevin, uh, we'll throw them to the top. Frank Hernandez wants to know, Earl, what was the spark that made you transfer to FSU? Like, I guess, what was the final thing that you're like, that's that's where I'm going to call home? Uh, you know, I was originally, it was either here or uh, Alabama. Uh, you know, Coach Saban, he, he put his foot on my throat, you know, got me. He ended, he ended up getting me to go up there. Uh, you know, but with him, you know, being retired and him getting a little bit older, um, you know, it, it was best for me to, you know, just hop in the portal, um, you know, take my talent somewhere else. Um, and, you know, like I said, I was supposed to come out of here, you know, straight out of high school, you know, just – just keeping that, you know, that relationship with Coach Norvell, you know, Coach Fuller, you know, obviously I had that relationship with Coach Pat, you know, he coached me in high school mm -hmm. as well. It was just a no-brainer, you know. Like uh, the other boy said, everything that Coach Norvell and Coach Fuller, you know, everybody here at Florida State, they told me what they were going to do in the next few years of uh, me coming out of high school. You know, they stuck to their word, and they did that. So, you know, that played a profound effect on my, uh, you know, decision coming here out of the uh, transfer portal. Because I imagine when you're being recruited, even at the transfer level, you're hearing a lot of promises. Hey, once you're in this defense, here's the hole you're going to plug in. Here's what we're going to do because of it. it. Just how impactful is it when you're like, well, I've seen these guys promise me something three years ago. Mm -hmm. Look what they did versus guys who you're like, well, you can tell me that, but I, I haven't seen, you know, uh -huh. that happen. Right. Um. Well, <laughs> Sorry, no, you're good. That was very wordy. Yeah, just yeah. like, you know, again, you uh, – when guys, when coaches are promising you stuff while you're in the transfer portal, it's mm -hmm. got to have a huge impact when you're like, you know, I've actually seen them do it versus every other school. Maybe you're talking to someone, you're like, they're promising you stuff, but you haven't seen it before. Mm -hmm. um, just how how much of an impact do that have on your recruitment being like, these guys do what they say they're going to do, and so I know they're going to do what they're promising me now. Uh, yeah, like I said, with, with them standing on their word, coming out of high school and doing what they said they were going to do, that's, that's, that's really big. You know, Coach Novell coming in and flipping the program and changing it to what it is now. You know that that played, like I said, it played a profound effect on my um my decision coming out of, coming here. Uh, and I, I just want to you know just add on to that and keep stacking. You know, just probably win a national championship. That's the goal. Yes, I should say. I'm gonna just put that out there now. Um, it's the yeah. only goal. Yeah. National championships. All right. I'm asking WF's question instead of the one I wanted to ask there. Uh, what's your favorite thing to do in Tallahassee? My favorite thing? Uh, to be honest, I'm not. I really don't like – I don't go out for real. Yeah. You no, know, I like to just chill at my career, you know, just just play the game. Uh, I don't really watch movies. You know, I like to play Madden and stuff like that, you know, watch football, football-related things, you know, whether that's just me watching film, chilling at the career. Mm -hmm. um, but – no, nah, I, I don't really do too much. Me and Marvin, actually, you know, we like to go fishing and stuff. We, we okay. from the same, from, from uh, we both from Fort Lauderdale, Miami area. So, you know, we like to go fishing a lot. So, gotcha. you know, we haven't been yet. But, you know, we definitely, we was actually going to try to go this weekend. So, we're going we gonna to see what that's about. Um, but, yeah, I definitely like to start going fishing out here. Okay, uh, we'll get you some spots. There's some there's some real good fishing spots. Like here in Tallahassee, you can do mm -hmm. some some bass, some fresh water, and there's some stuff yep. right down there, too. Mm -hmm. 21, uh, Earl, if you didn't play DB, what position would you play? I'd probably be a receiver. Okay. Receiver. A lot of people don't know this, but I did play running back. You know, my Lily, my Lily years, in, uh, in Lily, uh, like my, my youth football years, I played running back. So I'd probably say uh, running back as well. I don't think anybody could tackle me. That's just how I feel. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It seems to be like a common sentiment among like defensive players. Like if I were playing offense, yeah. no one could tackle me. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> Uh, C. Rosa wants to know, have you had a chance to have any conversations with some current DB greats in the NFL, like uh, Asante Samuel Jr., Jalen Ramsey, uh, Jamie Robinson, or, or Derwin James, or any of those guys? Um, yeah, actually, I was, I was able to get on the phone with uh, Jalen, you know, at Alabama. Uh, coach Kelly, he used to coach here. 
Uh, he got me on the phone f for uh, a few seconds with uh, Jalen, you know, when I was there. And, you know, with, with Zant, uh, Sante Samuel, uh, Stanford Samuel, um, and Jamie Robinson, you know, I, I spoke with those guys, you know, prior to me coming here. Um, even when I jumped in the uh, portal, you know, those guys were on me hard about, you know, just making that move and coming yeah. here to Florida State. So, you know, I, I, uh, I tell you, uh, we, we exchanged some words, you know, got to know each other and build that, that relationship, that, uh, that, that FSU de defensive back relationship. So, you know, I, I definitely got in touch with those guys. You know, I can't wait to keep stacking those relationships. But yeah, it was uh, DB greats. Quite the, uh, you know, quite the, quite the shoes to fill. We're confident you'll do it. Frank Hernandez wants to know uh, what team are you most excited to play against this season? Notre Dame, Clemson, or one of the rivals, so Miami or Florida? Uh, I definitely want to play against that U. Feel me? Uh, like I said, I'm from there. Uh, I can't wait to put on, you know, in the hot rock with my guys. You know, all my Florida State brothers. I can't wait for that game. Have you and your dad talked about that? Like, yeah, is, he, yeah. is he gonna put on the FSU gear for that one game, or how? What do you think he's gonna do? <laughs> nah, he, he definitely gonna be in that Garnet and Gold. You know, he's gonna be a no, no, no fan for that 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 game specifically. Awesome, man. Well, hey, we appreciate you coming by, Earl. Uh, folks, thank you for the questions. Thank you for taking time to answer them, letting the folks get to know you a little bit off the field. Uh, man, we're excited to see what you do in Doak and all over the ACC this uh, this fall. So, thanks for coming by. That's appreciate right. It. Appreciate it too. There you go. That's a good exit. Folks, thank you for submitting your questions. We've got BJ Gibson, freshman wide receiver, coming up. Again, this is the Battles End Spring Live Show. Uh, we are the collective that directly supports Florida State football players. You can directly support players by going to thebattlesend.com and becoming a member. Make sure you all like this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're going to be doing these every Wednesday. Uh, well, at least next Wednesday until spring's over. We'll take a little break when these guys have to go be students for a bit, and then we will pick it right back up again this summer. BJ, what's up, man? What's going on? How you doing? Doing all right. How about yourself? Good. Good, man. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. I haven't seen you in minutes. We're asking you crazy TikTok questions. Now it'll be a little oh, different. Yeah. We got some uh, some questions coming from the uh, the chat. But first, I just want to talk about your your adjustment to Florida State. What, what's what been kind of the biggest, oh, wow, like I'm in, I'm in college now moments. And uh, what do you feel like maybe you've adjusted to a little more easily? I'll definitely say coming in first was tour duty. That was the biggest thing to get used to. I mean, waking up at, what, 5 a.m., mm -hmm. going to the facility, hours straight running and drills. That was pretty – hit me in the face pretty hard, I ain't going to lie. Um, but overall, like, the weight room and everything else, like, that's transitioned pretty well. Like, I feel like I came here, like, phys like physical-wise, mm -hmm. like, in the right in the right shape. Um, <clears throat> but i say that's about it. Tour duty probably really hit me in the face the hardest. You can be honest. This is, like, again, no one's listening – I guess. Uh, was there a moment during like that first one where you're like, oh my gosh, I should be in high school right now, like yeah. in, in in like economics class, not you know <laughs> running yeah. around. A couple of times, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. And how helpful was it though to have other guys like Cameron Fryer, who we're gonna talk to next, another early enrollee, Luke Croman Hoke or Croman Hawk, um, Charles Lester, and, and those guys who were also in your same boat who were doing it. Like, was that helpful having other guys? Oh yeah, Camden and Luke are definitely like those guys that you, like that you want to be around every day. Like those are guys that push you, like, when they say a player-led team, like, those are the type of guys that you want to be around that, like, push you every day, like, literally every day, yep. every moment of the day. When, you, when you're when feeling down, those are guys you want to be around that, you know, help you, like, you know, lift you up on a bad day. But, yeah, those two guys are really good at doing that. Those are really good teammates. So you're obviously a, a highly recruited guy. Uh, we have you on here because this is our instant impact newcomers. So there's a lot about your game that I'm sure you love. But what are the things like you're most focused on developing this spring as, as you adjust to college? Uh, I would say like it's a big difference between like going against uh, college DBs versus mm -hmm. high school DBs. So like really your feet work is, has to be like on point at like this level to like to create separation because separation is like the biggest thing as playing receiver like you got to get separation to get the ball so like that's what i'm really working on like i would say right now like that's my biggest emphasis right now awesome man so grant gray wants to know uh if you had to choose you have to choose here baseball or football i can't answer that question yeah, i was just saying this is a football school team, but hey, it's, it's gonna be cool, right? You've seen the baseball team do what they're doing. I mean, how exciting was yeah, that? Yeah, I went, I went last night. That shit was electric, bro. Did you? Dude. Yeah, excuse me. I know you're good. I remember I, I checked the stats and I was like, okay, we're in the third inning. We're up like 12 to 2. 
So either I'm going to turn it on and I'll be the jinx. Like, I can't, I can't turn it on now. I just yeah. got to gotta ride it out just looking at the stats in the app. Um, but, man, how cool has that been just to see that turnaround that the baseball team's made? And uh, how excited does that get you to, to join them next spring? Oh, Coach Jerry has definitely turned things around there, and I really like that about him. <clears throat> um, Coach Jerry actually recruited me um, when he was at Notre Dame. Okay. So, like, it, it kind of worked out perfectly, that, you know, that, like, that I chose to come here because, like, I mean, he kept recruiting me at, like, once he got here. So, like, yeah. So, uh, Nick Snyder wants to know, how do you get in sync with a QB, let alone a QB room? Good question. Yeah, so, so obviously you're trying to get your timings and your rhythm down with, you know, the, the starting quarterback, but yeah. you'll have a legitimate competition going on right now. Mm -hmm. You've also got Luke, who gets substantial reps. Like, ha does that make it more challenging? Does that make you more versatile, you know, working with three quarterbacks? How, how does that go? Um, no, because, like, when the, like when we all got here, like, we did, like, our own thing. Like, we went out to the mm -hmm. field. We threw it all the QBs. So, like, I've pretty much seen the ball come out of, like, from DJ to Dylan McNamara, mm -hmm. um, even Michael Grant, Trevor Jackson, Luke. I mean, all the guys. Like, I've seen the ball come out of the guys' hands. And, like, we all – we have a great quarterback room from yeah. top to bottom. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's – just getting time and down repetition is the best way to do that, in my opinion. So how helpful is it having, I mean, you have such a good mix, right? You've got DJ who is is going into a, his sixth year of college football, who's seen <clears> a couple <throat> different systems, very physically gifted as well. You've got Brock, who's been in this system for a full year, has has really learned it was, you know, on Jordan Travis's hip last year. And then you've got oh, yeah. Luke, ultra talented, but very young. Like, mm -hmm. what are you kind of, what are you kind of able to learn from each guy in that situation? And, and when y'all are learning the playbook and, and the mental aspects, who, who do you go to for what? Uh, man, Luger probably closes out the quarterback just because like, I mean, he's my class. Right. And I have like the, I've had the longest relationship with Luke because he obviously he recruited me to come here. He did a really good job of doing that. Yeah. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Luke's a good dudes, but like, yeah, I, I kind of lean on Luke for cool. stuff like that because you know just because it's, it's probably it's kind of easier to talk to Luke because you know he he knows where my head is I know kind of where his is so like for sure yeah so Grillmaster asks uh, what aspects of baseball do you think help you in football or vice versa um baseball you have to be really like like your mobility you have to like yeah. be able to move around like really well so like and football you obviously got to move around so I feel like the mobility part of baseball really helped me become a better football player also. Like stiff hips, like baseball, I used to have stiff, really, really stiff hips. Yeah. And like working on that has like really transitioned me to become a, like a better receiver. Are you a, you a pitcher, infielder? I'm position? an outfielder. You're an outfielder? Yeah, okay. outfielder. There's another guy who played uh, football here in outfield. It his name is James Winston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Who's that a, guy? Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I do know uh, one time we saw him throw basically from the fence to the third base. Oh, yeah. Uh, James out of hose. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was, he was crazy, man. Uh, Similarly, 5 asked PJ, what's it been like working with Coach Storms? Hashtag built by Storms. Oh, yeah. Uh, Coach Storms, bro, that's my guy. I love Coach Storms. I feel like he's done a really good job with the weight room stuff, even like the speed stuff, like the speed training that we do in the winter program. But the running program really transitioned my body. I mean, I came here at 188 pounds and I'm like fluctuating between 200 and like 196 right wow. now, so. And still kept all your speed, you're still kept still, all my, Matter of fact, I actually got faster. I so, will say at my age, that's not what happens when you uh, <laughs> gain 20 pounds. Yeah, know? but I mean, when it's muscle, like oh, it's yeah. different. So I, like, it seems like Coach Storms is really involved in all aspects of it. I mean, we see him flying around the practice field. You see oh, him yeah. on the sidelines of games. So, um, how helpful is that when you're transitioning from a high school program to a college weight program, having a strength coach that's not just in the weight room, but is at every aspect of your training? It's just like that, like with everything here. Like the people here, I feel like they're more involved than just like outside of their job. Like they're involved with everything, yep. which is a big reason why I chose to come here because of the people. Like the people are involved in everything you see. I mean, like you see, like just like with the boosters, like you see them pouring yep. into us. So like that just tells me that they believe in the student athletes here. And like, yeah. that's really, no, absolutely, man. that's growing and, as a culture here. You know, it's again, it's just cool from this side, like at, when the fans hear y'all talk about this, cause that's, you know, why people are so passionate about this place. And it's awesome that it kind of, you know, y'all feel that energy that's, that's put into you by, by the supporters. Um, but yeah, man, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for giving the fans some of your time and oh, yeah. getting to know you a little bit here on a Wednesday night. And yeah, man, we look forward to talking to you again soon. I'll let you hop out and we'll bring, uh, we'll bring Camden Fryer in. I appreciate thanks you for having me. me. Good talking to you. Yeah. We'll see you, man. Yeah, have a good one.
Folks, that was freshman wide receiver B.J. Gibson. We got Camden Fryer walking in right now. Uh, again, this is the Battles in live spring. This is the Battles in live spring show. We are the collective that directly supports Florida State football players. If y'all want to support Florida State players, go to thebattlesend.com. What's up, man? How you doing? Good. How about you? Good. Good to meet you in person. Yes, sir. Good to meet you too. Yeah, uh, you don't know this, but we were in a, the same picture this weekend. You were running for an 85-yard touchdown. I found myself in a little. Blurry picture. Oh, yes, sir. That's cool. That's Dude, cool. Let's, let's start there. Uh, you know, that, I know that was reported that, you know, you had an excellent play down the sidelines. We've seen your speed showcase. I think you were what, like the all combine trophy winner your junior year at the Nike combine. Um, you bring a ton of speed to this position. Just g give the folks a quick intro to your game, what they should expect to see out of you on the field. Um, you know, I, I don't like to talk too much about myself, mostly just show, but, um, you know, it, I mean, it may not look like it, but I, I'm a pretty fast um, football player and, you know, I just I, I I like to use my speed in open field, whether it's before I catch a ball or after. And um, you know, I just want to be able to help the team in any way. Yeah, man. And uh, you know, you obviously come from a Florida State family. Your father was on uh, the '93 national championship yes, team. He's got what the Sports Illustrated cover. He's one of the guys in there. And I believe your uncle was on the '99 team yes, as sir. well. So when you were growing up, I mean, obviously a lot of folks watching this grew up in houses that are huge Florida State fans, but. Having two guys that were part of that dynasty, what was that like? What they, what were their favorite stories to tell you growing up? Like, oh, there's, there's too many to count about the stories, uh, and I've heard them several times. But um, you know, I've, I, I, I've grown up a Florida State fan, and um, you know, it's a blessing to be here. And I've, you know, um, as a child, I always wanted to come here, um, and, but then in high school, I never thought I'd come here. You know, okay. I, I really thought I was going to go somewhere else. I told my father I was going to go somewhere else that I wasn't coming here. Um, but so what flipped? Like when uh, was kind of the Coach, moment that Coach Norvell, Coach okay. yeah, he, um, the the what he brought to this university really just made me want to come here, and you know I just I wanted to do my own thing, you know, and mm -hmm. you know I love my father and you know what he's done here, my uncle, what he's done here, and I I've always loved Tallahassee, I've always been a fan of this place, but um, you know I just you know be my own man, do my own thing, but then you know just meeting Coach Norvell and just you know what he what he's brought to Tallahassee and what he's brought to the school that I've loved my whole life, it's um. You know, it's it's really changed this place, as everyone can tell. And you know, I just I, I want to be a part of that. So you know, there's, and just um, the way he made me feel, and the way he made my family feel, and it's just you know, it's it's a blessing to be here. Yeah, man. And and look again, the the theme tonight is like I've said ten times, the the instant impact newcomers, and that's why we had you here. You know, you were Norvell said this is maybe the fastest team he's ever coached, and and you're very much a part of that. Can, can you give us some context, like when we hear fastest team that he's ever coached? I mean what's going on in the building like talk to us about what that speed looks like um this is i've never been around a group of individuals as, as fast as we are um you know not this is my first year at the college level but and um, these guys are fast um normally i'm just you know able to just blow by people and it's not it's not like that no more yeah um you know thankfully i'm still able to do a thing or two here and there but um you know with the type of training that we got with coach storms and speed training weight training and just the way they do everything you know it's just it's just smart and um you know this, these guys, we're, guys on the field were rolling. I mean, it's, it's oh, yeah. fun to watch. But, you know, I'm excited to see what um, the team can do this fall because it's, it's, it's going to be pretty crazy. What guy in the DB room have you been most competitive with so far? Like, Oh, not really sure. Not really sure. Um, you know, me, me and Kai's gone at a couple times. Okay. Um, that's my boy. That's my roommate. And um, me, shoot, me and, me and Kai, me and Stuggs, me and – Jamari a couple times yeah. before he um yep. you know he's he's injured right now that stink but um you know not no one particular person but got my fair share of everyone else yeah it's gonna be again like you said how everyone's here can keep up with you yes sir you turn it on so uh, we're gonna take a few questions again folks if you want to ask questions please throw them in the chat uh Seminole 850 wants to know what are some goals you have for yourself as you start your first season here at FSU uh my goal this for this season is just um to be a part of the team and just you know be able to contribute in any way that I can um you know I, I want to go out there and you know want to go catch a touchdown and you know rack up a whole bunch of yards but you know we'll just we'll see what we'll see what goes um you know I'm just probably just be able to contribute in any type of way do you have a uh do you have a, a touchdown celebration picked out though for your first touchdown no sir um if right. you'll come to find out I'm not much of a dancer I leave that uh you're Wayne. like the handshake and I'm, I'm the handshake you know praise the Lord and that's me you'll, I'll leave the dance until yeah. Lil Wayne oh, so you could tag him in. yeah you could tag him in he could do the dance for you you know oh you yeah for sure the ball and let, I, I like course. that solid approach <laughs> Nick Snyder wants to know how does it feel flying around with this QB room 
this is crazy. I've never um, seen footballs fly around the building like this or fly, fly around the field. Um, it's insane. Um, these things are coming, and I'm loving it. Yeah. I'm loving. It. I've um, you know, not many times in my high school career. Um, I only had really one quarterback in my high school career that can really throw the football. Um, so you know, being able to just have yeah. you know these quarterbacks like this, the way they can move around the pocket, make things happen, and just get you that thing quick and fast and on point. You know, it's it's awesome. It's fun to play with, and I'm excited to just you know get going with it. Now again, we we hear the talking point a lot is is establishing that rhythm, right? The timing with with your quarterbacks. Uh, that how do you go about doing that? Like, have, what's that process been like to get more and more comfortable with them? Do y'all you know go throw balls outside of practice? For or sure. Do do oh um, no, we we've definitely had a lot of work outside of practice. Um, my shoot, second, third, fourth night here. We were running routes. I mean, it nice. was it was not. It, it, I think it was our third my third night here. We were running routes. We had everyone coming. And, um, you know, we you know Brock had us up there. I think DJ came about a week after we did. But you yeah. know, Brock Brock had us. You know, introducing himself. Um, you know, getting to know us. Like, all right, bro. This this is kind of the things that you're f fixing to see. Um, you know, let's get into it. Let me time y'all up. So we just went and ran routes for him, and uh, you know, it was good. And we were timing up with Luke because we. Most yeah. of us have never thrown with Luke before, um, and then you know DJ eventually came in, and you know we, we we got a lot of work in before spring ball actually started, and I feel like that um that kind of helped us translate over to spring ball, um you know let these guys just kind of get a feel for how we roll so they can you know get get us the ball. That's excellent, man. So uh, yeah, Grant Grant Gray is gonna ask the same question. Uh, BJ was a little diplomatic about this, which is understandable. Baseball or football? If you had to pick one, it's tough, but I like football and um. You know, I'm not even going to say for the sport itself mm -hmm. or, like, the actual playing of ball, but just the camaraderie and the brotherhood that football brings. Um, it's, it's, it's not like any other sport. Um, and, you know, it's, it's just a blessing to be able to be able to be part of that and just, you know, do this after high school because, you know, it, it's fun. It's fun. Yeah, man. So Play for Keeps that follows up on that. Uh, what's it like balancing two sports at such a high level? Um, it's not easy, I will say. Um, you know, it's a challenge, and I, you know, I'm, I'm ready to do it. But um, you know, it, it, it's a lot of thought process that goes into it. Um, when you know, when am I gonna hit the baseball? When am I gonna get some swings in? Um, you know, but it's, it's making sure I'm still catching the football, running routes. So um, you know, it, it's a lot of thought that I've had to put into recently and in how I'm gonna do these things and um. Haven't quite got it all mapped out yet because I'm really focused on football at the moment. But um, this is something that me and my family and, you know, with the help of both coaches on both sides that we're going to figure it out. As a lifelong FSU fan and, uh, you know, a guy who will join the baseball team, how, how exciting was last night? <sighs> me and BJ were there last night. Yeah. And after about a home run or two, we looked at each other. We were dapping each other. Up. We were <laughs> like, man, let's do this. Like, we wish we could go out there now. It was awesome. Um, you know, there's nothing like – baseball and Dick Hauser home um, you know it, okay. it may not be the biggest college baseball stadium but it's just one of the most traditional and it's just you know it's, it's awesome up in there yeah man it's incredible uh Zach Ainge asked what is your first memory in Doe Campbell my first memory um probably watching us play Clemson and okay. I don't remember what year it was I was very young I was very young we went and you know, me and my dad, we talked to so many people that day. Yeah. Um, and I, I, this is very vivid because, you know, I was young, but um, we're, we went all around. We went all up, up in the facility. Um, we met all types of coaches and just, you know, he, dad, it had been a while since dad had been back, so he was happy to be yeah. there. And I was just small wearing a little jersey, you know, didn't know nothing. But I just remember we were up there and just hearing the war chant for the first time in person, just – um, chopping for the first time in person and just you know we, we I do remember that we killed Clemson that time so okay, um, good. you know it, it was you know very special and I'm I'm just excited to be able to just you know be that down there on the field and actually do this myself like most lifelong fans did you learn how to spell the word Florida with the fight song yes like, yeah okay no when I when just I was a, when I was a child in school and I'll do this I'll do this um now to the day, but when I was a child in school and I was at the spell for it I go F L O R I D A but the first word I learned oh spell. yeah seriously yeah. seriously um no it it's special so what was what was that process like for you because I mean again I, I grew up in Tallahassee like lifelong Florida State fan my my parents were not great athletes which is why I'm here and and not there. <laughs> Sorry, mom, dad, love you guys. Uh, but, you know, I, I grew up the lifelong fan, but it's always been watching, you know, the team and, and cheering for them to win. Now, when did you kind of go through the transition of going from, hey, I'm going to Florida State games just to cheer for this team to, like, taking kind of an analytical approach of, like, I'm here to evaluate if this is a program I want to play at. Mm -hmm. like, how did that change happen? Uh, like? Probably about eighth grade. Um, okay. You know, started really getting into football during middle school, and, um, 
I started to realize, um, you know, I'm, maybe this is possibly something I can do in college. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, at probably eighth grade, um, went and watched them, and we played them. Um, that first game we played Boise State when we lost. Um, oh, man, yes. And that, that was rough. But, um, yeah, it was tough. I, I don't even like bringing it up. But that was probably my first game where we're thinking, like, I may want to come and play here. Yeah. Um, so, but th th like I said, and then, you know, the first couple of years, just with everything that was going on here and me kind of wanting to do my own thing mm -hmm. and, um, you know, seeing a little bit of, you know, light in the recruiting process, I was excited to just, you know, travel around and visit, th visit other places. And, um, probably eighth grade was the first time I came here. I was like, all right, this may be somewhere I could actually play if, you know, yeah. God willing. Well, I mean, if you keep doing what you've been doing so far and what folks have gotten to see on the, the, the social media channels and in the climb, I, I've no doubt you will very much be doing your own thing and, and you will be your own name. Uh, Grillmaster asks, biggest rival for you, Miami or Florida? So I feel like Miami fans probably don't like me as much, just um, being what my father did to them. But with me living and on, on, there's been um, already some Twitter stuff about me looking like a little girl or something like that. But um, <laughs> Yeah, it made Twitter me, is a fun. Yeah, it made me laugh too. Place. It made me laugh too, but um, with me living so close to Gainesville yeah. and having so many friends that are Florida fans, like my two best friends at home that I communicate with every day, you know that they, huge Florida fans, huge Florida fans, yeah. and they're but um, a Florida game for me. Cool, man. yeah, because I mean Lake City, I, I believe, was a, the original site of the University of Florida. I knew I'm not sure. All I know is that we're close, and I, yeah. I deal with a bunch of Florida fans. Oh yeah, uh, I was. <laughs> Answer this one honestly. This is going to be fun. Uh, Zyler asks, as a wide receiver, what can you do better than your dad? Um, honestly, it's a no-brainer. Sorry, Dad, but I'm much faster than he was. He, um, you know, he, he's always been able to catch balls in traffic, um, and he always told me he was good at that, and, yeah. but he never had any film. Like, I probably only saw three catches till I think it was my 10th grade year. He had um, some lady that he's known for a very long time who works here in the film, um, she made a highlight reel of him. Okay. And I had never seen him play f college football besides, like, two, three catches. And I w it was probably, like, 20 minutes long. And oh. I was honestly amazed. And and he probably watched that thing five times <laughs> um, that week. But <laughs> like, like, I was going to say, did you watch five times or was you were I, I, I was forced to watch it at least twice. But, um, no, and just the way he was catching um, in traffic was insane. Um, you know, I've never just – his ability to just go and get the ball and come down with it. And um, probably my favorite one, he was a freshman or, so, or a redshirt freshman, and he made some unbelievable catch against Florida. Okay. But, um, you know, just the way he's – like, he always came down with it. And, yeah. you know, and that's something that I want to aspire to be like him, just being able to, like, you know, the quarterback throws it to me, they know I'm coming down with it. And that's right. something that I'm working on right now. And I feel like I'm pretty good at it, but, you know, just we'll always want to get better. But he was never as fast as me. So hey, how much when you were growing up, was was he always your coach or did he kind of like, was just your dad there for support and kind of had your coach do the so, thing? So uh, he, he kind of gave himself a rule and I'm thankful for it um, with all three of us because I'm a middle child of two brothers. And um, once we passed 10 years old, he was not in coaches no more. Okay. And um, he just kind of wanted to let us be, do our own thing. So he was my coach, every single team, every single sport, all the way till I was 10. And then a couple times here and there, he was all like a little assistant coach and type. But right, right. He was he was always my receiver coach. Yeah. You know, we come home, like in high school. Um, I was able to play at varsity as a freshman, so even, you know, it was it was serious day yeah. one. Um, in high school, we come home high school. I get home at twelve one o'clock, and then we're staying up till two three that morning watching film, breaking down stuff. And, um, you know, we get in arguments sometimes. I'm like, Dad, come on. But, you know, he's like, you know, you're going to want – you need yeah. this. And I, I'm very thankful for that. For sure. But, um, you know, he was, he's always been my receiver coach. But, um, you know, he, he's he's always kind of respecting me in a way, just, you know, let me do my thing and, like, you know, just not be on top of me. And I appreciate that. And he's, he's done that here, Good. Um, which, you know, I appreciate that. But, um, you know, he, 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 he can't wait. And I can't wait either. Oh, yeah. I, I feel like, you know, when you score that first touchdown, you know, he might even be a little more – a little more excited than you are in that moment. I don't oh know. yeah, I'm, I think he will be. Um, someone made an edit the other day, um, with that touchdown I had in the scrimmage and his Miami yeah. touchdown. He sent it to me and he said that brought him that brought him to um, 
tearing up and that that was pretty special that's amazing man it's, oh, yeah. it's so cool that y'all have that bond or able able to share those experiences uh yes nick snyder we will we will ask cam to do a wellness check on his uf friends because they are suffering bad in all sports well, i think they did well in club roller hockey this year did we see that on twitter that was uh that was exciting stuff for the guys down there. Well, uh, Cam, we really appreciate you stopping by, man, and, and giving all these people, again, just I'm sure I'm not the only one that got to do some really cool reminiscing looking back, but also looking forward at, at what you're going to be here. And, you know, you are going to be your own player. And, man, we're fired up to see it. So thanks again for coming by. Yes, sir. I appreciate, appreciate you. Yes, sir. It's nice to meet right. you. Yeah, you too. Thanks a lot. We'll see you. Yes, sir. All right, folks, thanks again for stopping by. This was the Battles in third live spring show Q&A. Thank you for all the questions and more so thank you for the continued support of Florida State football players through the Battles in. If you're not a member yet, please go to thebattlesin.com and join the family today. We are the collective that supports FSU football players. Folks, NIL is critical in today's college football landscape if we want to be competitive. So again, go to thebattlesin.com. Join the family today and make sure y'all come by next Wednesday for our next live show.